Tonight on Four Star Playhouse, singer presents Joan Fontaine in The Girl on the Park Bench. came in the mail exactly one day after the mayor of our city relaxed the rent control. I decided not to waste any time, so I lodged an immediate protest with the manager of our building here, and he agreed to contact the owner. The owner of the building, if nothing else, has been prompt. His answer came by special messenger an hour ago. Pay or get out. Pay or get out. Well, at least it's to the point. It doesn't leave much room for misinterpretation. I'm not surprised at all. Madeline, well, you showed it to me before the meeting. Well, well, why don't we pay up or get out? Not on your life. In the first place, this whole maneuver of the mayor's in getting off the rent controls is just a, a payoff for some of his political debts. And in the second place, this old goat who owns this building, whoever and wherever he is, couldn't even wait for the smell of crooked politics to leave the air before he pounced in with both feet to get his disgraceful pound of rent. Now, uh, naturally, none of us have the slightest intention of letting him get away with it. So, uh, I thought we all ought to get together and uh, draft our outraged reply. Well, I've got to get to the market. Thanks for advising me. It broke up the day nicely. Yes, but we've only just begun. Oh, heavens, I couldn't take any more time. Anyway, we're always behind in our rent, so it doesn't make much difference to us. Oh, and by the time we catch up, then the controls will probably be back on again. <laughs> well, goodbye, everyone. But what are we going to do? Uh, I find the best procedures in cases like this is to keep your mouth shut. Oh, you doll. Well, with the shortage of apartments, uh, our landlord, uh, that is, the old goat, as you prefer to call him, Miss Overmeyer, is holding all the aces. I, for one, am going to pay up. Between having a wife, three kids, and a couple of dogs, I simply can't get out. So, if that's all, why don't we have a drink and get on to a subject of more general interest? In my most pessimistic, it never occurred to me that I wouldn't have at least one of you on my side in this fight. That at least one of you who would stand up to this money-grubbing landlord and tell him to go peddle his apartment. He not only could, but undoubtedly would. All right. The fact that I'm alone in this doesn't alter things in the slightest. This rent increase is unbearable, intolerable, and completely un-American. Expensive, too. I am going to this mayor personally. I am going to bid him in his vote-buying den, and I am going to tell him how crooked his administration is. Five will get you 1500 He can tell you how crooked it is down to the last nickel. And then... And then I shall give my answer to this miserable landlord of ours, and I shall tell this blood-sucking old goat that I shall neither pay nor get. I am off to see the mayor. So hard. Judy, I believe there is a venerable saying to the effect that we should be thankful to have the work to do or something. <laughs> you mind if I sit down and watch? I'll be honored. Mr. Yen, you haven't had your dinner yet. I bet it's some ancient Chinese dish. The ancient Chinese dish is corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> I hope you take pity on an old man's loneliness and share it with me. I will be honored, but that's not what I came in for. Judy, 
I do hope your visit is not in connection with the lovable American custom of the touch. Because if you press that 12 or no sale lever on that instrument of business, you will find it contains only $4.18. And I might add that your lovely smile and soft eyes do not touch this flinty heart. I shall keep my $4.18. Very well, you convinced me. You may take the four dollars and eighteen cents. <laughs> oh, Mr. Yen, I love you. And I knew you'd offer me the money, but that's not what I came in for, either. Well, you wish me to join the fabled cat in Curiosity's grave, or will you eventually confess it all? Well, I want... Mr. Yen, I wish to be married. I wish to be married tonight at 11 o'clock, right here. Well? Well... Are you serious? Why, Mr. Yen, of course. Trudy, I seldom am at loss for words, but you have cherished this idea for so many years, and I presume you have a young man in mind this time. Why, Dick Forsyth, of course. Oh, yes, the young looking war from out of the West. Then there really is such a man? Why, Mr. Yen, what do you mean? Oh, I am sorry, Trudy. You must forgive an old man whose mind works very slowly. Of course, you may be married here. Although I hear people speak well of churches as marriage sites. Mr. Yen, this has always been a, a sort of home to me, and this is where I want to get married. And, oh, Mr. Yen, I wish for you to give me in marriage and take the place of my father. I have never had a child. I feel unworthy, but I am honored. My wedding feast is unworthy to one small pot of corned beef and cabbage for a hungry young knight in shining armor. Mr. Yen, young men in love eat very little, and young girls eat practically nothing at all. Judy, I don't think you told me where the kingdom of this young prince is. Oh, now, don't tease me. And besides, we haven't much time. I ought to tidy things up a bit. I thought I'd put the altar over here. Through this, there is a small technical matter of a license. Oh, that? We've had that for oh, ever so long. Trudy, I think a minister is nice. Oh, so do I. I thought I'd ask the Reverend Tuttle. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I, I was wishing you'd come in. Hello, Trudy. Why? You look like the canary that just swallowed the cat. Oh, it's a wonderful night. Oh, I don't know. It's just like every other night. I captured no dangerous criminals. They won no rewards. Did nothing to become famous. <laughs> the night's not over yet. Watched. I know it. I'm certain of it. I'll never get on board without his knowing. Don't worry about it. Come on. Well, if you can't send me a hula girl, send me a picture of one. Well, my best wishes for a most uneventful crossing, Mrs. Lawson. Thank you. Oh, uh, my valuables. I I'll take that. Allow me. Thank you. So long. Aloha. Goodbye. Traveling by boat is probably the wise choice. Safety in numbers. You think so, Doctor? 83 potential killers? Five days and five nights on a floating trap. Good evening. Miss Patricia Felton, John Henshaw. Miss Felton, Mr. Henshaw. and 104. Thank you. This way, please. Welcome aboard. I hope
hope your accommodations are satisfactory. Oh, good, good, yes, rather, rather. Good. I managed to get you an outside cabin at the end of the passageway, so mine is the only one next to yours. Open your door only when you hear four knocks like this. Yes. And you're never to leave the cabin without me, understand? Never. Although the odds are that everyone aboard thinks you're Patricia Felton and I'm John Henshaw. Apparently, you didn't see that man staring at me. Well, in your case, Mrs. Lawson, don't all men? Stop trying to avoid the issue and stop underestimating my husband. In Michael's book, anything can be bought, including death. But we're not selling, Mrs. Lawson. Right into a tree. <laughs> Some ski instructor. Oh, I never felt so sorry for anyone in my whole life. He was so embarrassed. We didn't see him for three days. Sounds like fun. Oh, it was, Larry. Time just flew by. I hated coming home. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, I didn't mean <laughs> that. I missed you very much. Come on. Mm, you know. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? Nothing. It's this place, isn't it? Well, it's not exactly Sun Valley. You don't have to go in. I know a nice judge who keeps late hours. It's really a painless ceremony. Oh. Well, let me sell it first. I know it sounds silly, but I won't feel free until I do. You've been saying that for months. Sometimes I think you don't want to leave. Well, I do. I promise. All right. But I warn you, I am a very eligible bachelor. Mm. Mm. I object, Mr. Counselor, on the grounds that you've already proposed to me. <laughs> Objection, sister. I'll wait. Good evening, madam, Mr. Kessler. Uh -huh. Werner, how good to see you. Well, nice to have you back home, madam. Thank you. Coming in for a nightcap? Oh, I better not. It's a long drive back. Will I see you tomorrow? Well, I'll think about it. <laughs> yes, you'll see me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good night, darling. Please. Please marry me. You talk me into it. And tomorrow we'll set a date or I'll bring you with one of your own skis. <laughs> Good night. Good night, darling. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. 